Hello, I'm Sebastian Burns with you. And today on 308 TV, we are discussing one of the historical landmarks of the civil rights movement, the Selma to Montgomery March. This event was a series of three marches, ranging from March 7th to March 25th. The first march was on March 7th, 1965, led and organized by John Lewis, a 25-year-old at the time who happened to be the leader of the Student on Violent Committee, or SNCC. With the help of a few organizers, he managed to get about 600 people together to march. When they reached the end of the city at the Edmund Pettus Bridge, however, they were attacked by state troopers, and this day became known as Bloody Sunday. The second march took place March 9th. Days prior, Martin Luther King Jr. called forth volunteers all across the nation to come to Selma to aid in the march. About 2,000 people showed up, more than half of them white and about a third clergy members. Once again, they marched until they reached the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Instead of marching on, however, King tells the crowd to disperse, for they have no legal protection. This day is then known as Turnaround Tuesday. The third and final march takes place on March 21st, the day after President Johnson supplies the marchers with 1,000 military police and 2,000 army troops to escort the march. Over 8,000 people assembled at the Brown Chapel before they start in the five-day march to Montgomery. The final march ends on March 25, 1965. Once they arrive, nearly 25,000 demonstrators join the marches for a fourth rally at the state capitol. It is here where King gives his famous, how long, not long, speech. Well, that's all, folks. Until next time. Hi, I'm Emily Reiser, and today on The Tunes, we'll be discussing Jimi Hendrix and his impact on the music community. James Marshall Hendrix was an American rock guitarist, singer, and songwriter. His birth name was Johnny Allen Hendrix, but it was changed to James Marshall Hendrix in honor of his brother's death. Jimmy was born on November 27, 1942, in Seattle, Washington. His parents were James, or Al, Hendrix and Lucille Jetter. Jimmy had three younger siblings, all of whom Al and Lucille gave up to foster care and adoption. Jimmy died on September 18, 1970. He choked on his own vomit and died of asphyxia while intoxicated with barbecues. Some of his major contributions to rock music are improving the styles that were used to play guitar, such as playing the guitar on his back. He also influenced other singers on how they would sing and play the lead at the same time. During that time, a rock band only consisted of at least two people, a separate player for the leader and the singer. However, Jimmy changed the trend by singing and playing the lead at the same time. This attracted many musicians at that time. and. As a result, they practiced it, thus changing the look of rock significantly. He is also known to destroy his guitar by setting it on fire. It was in the era of rock and roll, the music of rebellion, that destroying instruments became a statement. Jimi Hendrix's music came to its peak in the 1960s when music, especially rock music, was still developing. Throughout his lifetime as a musician, Jimi held concerts in different places thus reuniting people and bridging the social gaps that existed between societies. For instance, between 1962 and 1965, Jimmy traveled around the county, excuse me, country as a backup player for Little Richard, Jackie Wilson, Sam Cooke, and the Isley Brothers, and others. Some of his recordings include Are You Experienced, Axis Full of Love, Electric Ladyland and The Cry of Love, which became among the top five songs on the best song charts of the United States and the United Kingdom. In terms of songwriting, Jimmy's songs were exceptional despite the fact that he could not read music. That's all for today. See you next time on The Tunes.